What up? Nah. Bro, it makes it all day long. I keep thinking there's another person in that car. It's just his fucking hat. He's riding with the cast. Peppers is living the dream. He's sunbathing at 30 max. Underneath a, a deadlift bar. Good. Right. Okay. This is the level of effort you get from Peppers on the daily. Does a rep, lays down for 30 minutes, you know? She just loves, she loves the floor, loves the platform. Actually, you're taking up JP's platform right now. JP, I'm using this platform, so. Yeah. Well. Heavy plates on the outside is the secret. It is, it really is. It's good, don't say that. Huh? That's the secret sauce. Did you just get Pepper's Yum Yum sauce? He's convinced it's just thousand island dressing. It's not. JP. It's Cause it's me, bro. That's why I'm a stud. I should have said that, bro. Right? Your goddamn business and stay out of your personal affairs. That's yeah, probably what I would say. Good day. Good day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Peppers, let's go. The fuck are you doing? You're giving me a honey bun. Wait. wait. Did you work out yet or not? Okay. Eat this, then you can work out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you already finished your workout. It's like an Uber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes into the, 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 the insulin. <laughs> Something about insulin, dude. I don't remember. Give me a second. Okay. I think that he did a lot of food. Nah. He really counts his macros. What are you trying to weigh? What are you trying to weigh that? Uh, 170, 81 kilos, so that's 178.5. Yeah. I was 178.3 this morning. Yeah. That was 80 kilos, thanks to Nut and Berry Trail Mix. Carl's. Protein intake, 15 grams a day. Yeah. Oh, that's been a good. <laughs> good. Don't give me one, no. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Essentially what we mean by novice is that when you come in using the stress recovery adaptation model that you can do more weight than you did 48 hours ago or 72 hours ago on the major lifts, right? Squat, bench, deadlift. I thought in the press. beginning it wasn't like that. Like then your body needs time to recover because it hasn't had this amount of strain for a while. Right. But then the more and more you train, the 
lower your body builds up like a, kind of a tolerance a tolerance so yeah. like it recovers faster or right. do i have it backwards well so you we're saying the same thing okay. i think it's just a misunderstanding of what's going on so if you're brand new, say you take a, a brand new person and you lift them on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Yeah. You apply the stress, you disrupt homeostasis, they, and then 48 hours later, you apply another stress mm -hmm. greater than the stress you applied on Monday, right? So say we do it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday you apply a stress, you disrupt homeostasis, they recover and adapt from that over the 48 hour period in between Monday and Wednesday. You apply a greater stress, disrupt homeostasis again, they recover and adapt, Friday they do the same thing again with additional stress. So maybe you add five pounds this time for a simple example, right? Then you take a 72 hour break for the weekend and you come back and you do it again on Monday. If you can do that, you're a novice. Someone who's been lifting for 10 years and is already incredibly strong is not gonna be able to just keep adding weight every time. Because if you could do that, right, you could just squat 5,000 pounds by now. Because you would just keep adding, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, a lot of times when you see advanced, more advanced programs or even intermediate programs, when there's like a lot more accessory work or variability or all, all these things, it's because a simple linear progression doesn't work anymore. So you have to create the stress like you did before, mm -hmm. but it's not going to happen. So you have to use different stimulation, so to speak. So I don't think it's that they're recovering faster, it's that an advanced strength training or a strength someone who's strength training that's advanced been going for several years they're gonna have to stay at the same weight for I mean sometimes a quarter of the year half of the year mm -hmm. Olympic athletes are sometimes PRing like once a year twice a year because they're so advanced so it takes so much for them to do it if that makes sense yeah and a lot of times they'll work at lower percentages so you'll see them working out like every single day and like how are they recovering from that you know it's because they're not doing more and more each time, like on a novice LP, mm -hmm. like a linear progression, they're doing maybe some sort of, you know, undulating program where they're doing our heavy light medium or something. So maybe Monday they went heavy, but then they went light on Wednesday and then they went medium weight on Friday. Yeah. And then they're gonna PR even once a week, but still would be considered an intermediate, but still a brand new intermediate. So they'll PR on the heavy day. Then the light day and the medium day are like, you know, movement preparation, Getting for uh, you know keeping from detraining on the medium day and then you're going to PR again on Monday so it might look like something like that just right. generally speaking that's like a myth about like spot reduction with that yeah like or like toning mm -hmm. yeah right. like I want to tone like my arms and like you need to build arm muscles yeah you need to do strength training so that you have muscle because mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't have any muscle you can't see <laughs> muscle definition but you can't yeah, you can't spot but usually if, if everything else is doing fine then that's the body fat you lose will be from there. Yeah. Also, like wherever, like, I mean, you can confirm it, but like wherever you have the most body fat, it's gonna take the longest to lose it from that area. If it's like the most abundant. It's true, but I think that I think it goes along with it because it's almost always the same. It's almost always in that from here to here mm -hmm. zone where the majority of your body fat's gonna be for most people. Yeah. I mean, there's anomalies out there, of course, but. Yeah. Right hips. Yeah. Pain with a broad brush, like you know, glutes, hips, legs, and stomach. Yeah. Yeah. This is where you're gonna carry the most of it anyway. So yes, for both of those reasons, sure. But it would be really weird if someone had a six pack and like really fat forearms. <laughs> like that is really, yeah. it's not really something you see. But you can see like super defined forearms. That's like insert in insert little fat. character picture of fat forearm dude. <laughs> <laughs> That would be really weird. I don't think I've ever seen any humans like that. Except for Popeye. Oh God, don't do this to me. <laughs> Let me eat first.